Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Um, welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Osborne and Two class. Uh, we've been talking a lot about radicals, and, and, and we've been learning a lot. I'm really proud of you. You guys have been doing a great job. And for those of you out there in the internet world, I hope you are following suit as well. And I hope that it is coming along very well for you. Uh, today we're going to talk about something very important. It's called rationalizing the denominator. A lot of times, people will not even know about rationalizing. They'll go ahead, they'll put their heart into a, a question, they'll answer it, and then they're going to leave it with a radical in the denominator. And that's bad. You can't do that. Mathematically speaking, you're just not allowed to do that. So today we're going to learn how to fix that. When a radical appears in the denominator of a quotient, remember quotient is just a fraction, you must convert the quotient so that the denominator does not contain any radicals. This is not a choice. You have to do it. The process is called rationalizing the denominator. In order to rationalize the denominator containing a single square root, square roots are the easiest, simply multiply both the numerator and denominator by the square given in the denominator. Remember that when you multiply a radical by itself, square root of a to square root of a, the radicals disappear and you're left with the radicand. So when you multiply the denominator by itself, the resulting value will equal the original radicand. Super simple if you remember to follow directions. I have here 2 over radical 5. I cannot have that. Sorry, my friends, it just will not happen. On the SAT, they will leave that as an answer. I almost guarantee you that they will leave that as an answer. Most people are going to answer that. They're going to say, oh, cool, I got it. No, you didn't. You must rationalize. So that means you're going to multiply that denominator to both the numerator and denominator. 2 times radical 5 is 2 radical 5. What's radical 5 times radical 5? 5. Done. Bye-bye. It has been rationalized. This is not difficult at all. Square root of 7 divided by square root of 12. Two, two thought processes here. You could go ahead and just multiply by radical 12, or you could simplify the radical first. Doesn't radical 12 break up into 4 times 3? So this could be written as square root of 7 over 2 radical 3. And now I just multiply by the radical 3 to make my life easier. That is totally, totally up to you. And this is going to be square root of 21 over 2 times radical 3 times radical 3. What's radical 3 times radical 3? Three? Three. Times 2? Six. 6. Now, Moro, what if I don't remember to reduce that, man? That's kind of scary. No worries. We'll do it in blue. You just multiply square root of 12 to both top and bottom. You're just going to have a lot more work to do. This will be the square root of 84 over... 12. But the square root of 84, if I'm not mistaken, that's, uh, let's see, any perfect squares there. What is it going to be? 7 and 12, yeah. Um, 7 and 12. How about 4 and 21? 4 and 21. Square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to have 2 square root of 21 over 12. Reduce that. That's square root of 21 over 6. I really don't mind how you do it. But if you can simplify from the beginning, I strongly suggest that. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Talk to me, brother. Okay. Again, I like it the way we did it in red first. That's a lot easier. Reduce, simplify rather, and then rationalize. For number four, I'm just going to multiply radical 2x to both top and bottom. So this is 4 times the square root of 2x over, what's 2x, square root of 2x and square root of 2x? Times 5? 10x. Bye-bye. Good day. Have a good one. Bye-bye. See ya. Does that make sense, my brothers? You promise? Yes, sir, my man. 
Thank you very much. Great, great question. Can the four and the ten? Yes. Can a two and the ten? So I can make that a two and a five. Actually, that's exactly what I should have done. I was testing you. Good job. No, I'm just kidding. I just didn't do it. Thank you very much. Always reduce. I got to practice what I preach. Thank you, son. Does that make sense, my brothers? Awesome. Okay, now, rationalizing a denominator which contains an nth root. I'm talking about a third root, a fourth root, a fifth root, etc., etc. It works the same way. The goal is to multiply both the numerator and denominator by an nth root that creates a perfect power of that nth root. So the denominator does not contain a radical. Tip. Know your perfect squares, your perfect cubes, and your perfect fourths to easily create perfect powers of the given nth root. It's not a requirement, but it definitely helps. That's why it's a tip. For example, let me show you how to, how to think about this. If we had to rationalize a quotient which contained the following radical, cube root of 4, okay? Let's think about what that cube root of 4 is made of. That cube root of 4, isn't that really the cube root of 2 times 2? Guys, why are you guys looking at me like I'm crazy? Doesn't 4 really break down to 2 times 2? Okay. So in this cube root of 4, how many more 2's do I need to, 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 to put in there to pull out one value of 2? So what I would do is I would multiply this by the cube root of... 2. Then I'm going to have the cube root of 2 cubed. What's the cube root of 2 cubed? Cancels and I have a 2. Are you understanding where we're going to go with this? Does that make sense? And this cube root, I'm looking for sets of 3. I only have two twos. I need to multiply one more 2 so I can have a set of 3. So I can pull out one of that value. Does that logic make sense, guys? Because I don't want to move forward unless it does. You promise me? Talk to me, brother. Okay. Thank you for your honesty. Look. You've got the cube root of 4, correct? Does everyone see that the cube root of 4 is a cube root of 2 times another 2, right? Can I pull out a 2 from there, guys? What do I need to multiply? One more 2. So if I multiply by another cube root of 2, now don't I have the cube root of 3 2's? Now can't I pull out 1 2 since I have a set of 3 in that case? Does that make sense, my man? Promise. Okay? This so makes sense, guys. So let's practice. And thank you. Okay. First one, 1 over the cube root of 6. 6 breaks up into 2 and 3, so it's not even worth breaking that down. How many 6s do I need to pull one out? So I'm going to multiply by cube root of 6 squared. Make your life easy. You could put 6 squared, but I like to visualize things. This way I see, okay, I'm missing two 6s. So up here, yeah, it's going to be the cube root of 36 for sure. But down here, now I have the cube root of 1, 2, 3, 6's. So what's the cube root of 3, 6's? Boom. Done. Bye-bye. You just rationalized. Some of you are looking at me a little funky. Talk to me, guys. Talk to me. How many 6's did I need in here to pull one out? You need two more, right? Because two plus one is three, right? So I needed to multiply by the cube root of six squared. I needed two more sixes. So when I got this mo this denominator, cube root of six times cube root of six squared is cube root of six to the third, which cancels and leaves me with a six. So cube root of six times cube root of six is six. No. Cube root of six times cube root of six is cube root of six squared. I need... 3 to pull 1 out. So I needed to multiply by a cube root of 6 squared. Does that make sense, son? Yes. Sir? How 
What do you mean, where did I get this from? I make it up because, son, what's the value of the cube root of 6 squared divided by the cube root of 6 squared? 1. So am I changing the value of this at all? I'm just changing the appearance. You with me, my man? Thank you, brother. Let's try another one, guys. This here, let's split them up. This is the cube root of 5 over the cube root of 18. Okay? However, I can multiply both top and bottom by the cube root of 18 squared. Yes. But that's going to be a lot of simplifying later. What I would do is this. Isn't this the cube root of 5 over the cube root of 3 squared times 2? How many 3's do I need to pull one out? 1, 3. How many 2's do I need to pull one out? So I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by cube root of 3 times 2 squared. 3 times 2 squared. Okay, guys, a lot of people have been having problems, so let's figure this out. This is going to be the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 12. So that's the cube root of 60. Now, guys, don't I now have three threes in a cube root? So that comes out as a three. Don't I now have three twos in a cube root? So that comes out as a two. So I got the cube root of 60 over six. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Remember, this is a video, so you can watch it again. Okay. Now, we got this guy. Actually, let me take this guy over here, and let's make it, give myself some more space. Okay, here. I got the fourth root of 4x cubed. Okay, I'm going to break this down into 6 over the fourth root of 2 squared x cubed. Why, Moro? So I can see how many of each factor I need. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Uh, no. I need 2 squared and an x. Very good. Because I need 2 more 2s. Brilliant. And I need 1 more x. Absolutely brilliant, son. Brilliant. So this is 6 times the 4th root of 4x over. How many 2s now do I have? 3. Really, guys? Come on. You have four fours and a fourth, a four twos and a fourth root, so that comes out as a two. How many x's do I have now in this fourth root? So that comes out as a, and I can reduce, so this is three times the fourth root of four x over x. Talk to me, guys, because my time is limited. Yes? How did you do it in a shorter way? Okay, you're not telling me a shorter way at all. You're making it longer. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Now, last thing, guys, conjugates. Sometimes you have to rationalize a sum or a difference of radicals in the denominator. All a conjugate is is changing the middle sign. So if I have a, the square root of A plus the square root of B, the square root of A minus the square root of B is going to be its conjugate. Conjugates differ only in the sign of the second term. When A and B are rational numbers, the product of two radical conjugates is a rational number. So if I have 1 minus square root of 5 and 1 plus the square root of 5, those are conjugates. The conjugate of square root of 3 plus square root of 2 is square root of 3 minus square root of 2. Those are conjugates. Now, when you rationalize conjugates, you're going to have to multiply them. But let me show you what happens here, guys. Please pay attention to this, because if you learn this, you're going to save yourself a lot of time on the homework, on the quizzes, on the tests. Remember the following. Do you guys remember that the product of difference of squares is the first term squared minus the second term squared. We'll check it out. I'll prove to you that this works. 
When I multiply conjugates, 5 times 5 is 25. Plus 5 square root of 7, minus 5 square root of 7, minus square root of 7 to square root of 7 is 7. Don't these middles cancel out? Am I not left with 25 minus 7? Hello? Guys, what's 5 squared? What's square root of 7 squared? Doesn't a difference of squares tell you that when you have a plus b times a minus b, it's the first term squared minus the second term squared? What's my first term here? 5. 5 squared is 25. What's my second term here? Square root of 7. What's square root of 7 squared? 7. So what's 25 minus 7? 18. Done. You want to do it the long way? God bless you. It's not good. Give me just a few more minutes and I'll finish up, I promise. You could do this the long way or you could learn the difference of squares. Hey, wait a second. I have the same term minus the same term being multiplied to the same term plus the same term. Oh, that's a difference of squares. First term squared is 36 minus second term squared is 12. 36 minus 12 is 24. I don't like that, Mr. Morrow. I don't get it. Do it the long way. 6 times 6 is 36. Plus 6 square root of 12. Minus 6 square root of 12. Plus, I mean, minus 12. These cancel. 36 minus 12 is still 24. Does that make sense? Okay. Last page. We won't do all of them, okay? I know you want to get out of here. Sometimes the denominator is a sum or difference involving radicals. If the radical expressions are, the denom are in the denominator, you can rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. You don't worry about the numerator, guys. You worry about the denominator. So what is this man talking about? In my denominator here for A, I've got the square root of 5 minus the square root of 2, right? So multiply both top and bottom by the conjugate. Now let's distribute. 3 square root of 2 times square root of 5 is 3 square root of 10. 3 square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 6. Because 3 times 1 is 3. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Now, here you could go the long route or you could recognize that when you conjugate, when you conjugate to rationalize, you're going to have a difference of squares. So take the first term squared, which is 25. Um, no. Thank you. Which is 5. Minus, always minus, the second term squared, which is 2. So this is going to be 3 square root of 10 plus 6 over 5 minus 2, which is 3, which equals square root of 10 plus 2. Because that 3 can be divided there and there. Do you want one more, or do you want me to let you get out of here? Why is it 5 minus 2? What is the square root of, uh, what is the, what is f square root of 5 squared? 5. What is square root of 2 squared? 2. You always multiply by the conjugate. Do you want one more, or do you want to leave? Your choice. One more, okay. Which one do you guys want, and I'll do the one you want? C? All right. The conjugate here, my brothers, is 3 plus square root of 6. Why, Moro? Because you just simply changed this sign, my brothers. Now distribute, y'all. Distribute. 4x times 3, that will be 12x. 4x times square root of 6 is plus... 4x square root of 6 over. You could do this the long way, or you could realize it's a difference of squares. So it's the first term squared minus the second term squared. So this is 12x plus 4x over square root of 6, I mean times square root of 6, over 9 minus 6, which is 3. Ding dong, the witch is gone. 
you could you could simplify it to this one, but not to this one. So be careful with this one. This would end up being 4x plus 4x square root of 6 over 3. Do you see why? Yes, sir. Would it be okay if you left it here? Yeah. Yes. For me, yes. If I say simplify, no. Thank you, guys. You rule. Thank you for your patience. Have a great day. I hope you learned a lot. Bye-bye.